percent from the field, 50 percent from three-point range. The second point is Al Anagagne checking in for Randolph and Taylor replaced by David Thomas. One of the things you got to love about Blanchard is the fact that every night he comes out to play, he knows he's going to be the target of the defense, and every night he's still able to get another one ace scoring. 15-19 remaining, Michigan down early 12-3, but they're coming back. One of the longest standing rivalries in Rivalry Week, presented by New York Life. This one goes back to January of 1909, 150th meeting tonight. Tom Izzo lost his first five against Michigan, but he has won his last five, including that record, the margin of 114.63, senior day. Last uh, spring, day in which Mateen Cleaves set the Big Ten record, 20 assists on the day, and became the all-time career assist leader in Big Ten play. And Tom Izzo with a growing resume and today celebrating birthday number 46 happy birthday to tom i gotta tell you i knew him as an assistant coach under judd heathcote for so many years glad he got the opportunity i know the fans of michigan state are happy too alley pass hudson from richardson but jason richardson delivered it right on the money terrific play reminiscent of cleaves to mo pete Dean Cleaves and Morris Peterson made that a trademark the Michigan State championship run. Looks like they left a little, little of it over, too. They're not the only guys that can exercise that. So 16 to 9, back up by seven, the Spartans. This is Gavin Groninger, three-point specialist. This five sophomore, Maurice Seawright. Rushman point guard with a shot clock for Robinson down to three. He may not know it. Backs out. so good he does so many things for this michigan state team not only his ability to shoot to rebound to pass to defend he may be as complete a player dave as there is in the big ten and somewhat in the shadow of Cleves until now his team his senior year fumble out of bounds on the fourth year through the hands of gavin Groninger. We, I think he's getting the notoriety now, and I think Brian Ellerby knows how good that Charlie Bell is because he's trying to concentrate everything he can out front to shut this guy down. I mean, as good as Cleves was, Bell was right there with him every step of the way, and now with Cleves gone, it's really Bell's team. Tom Izzo said Saturday he probably should not have played Charlie Bell as he battled the flu to only 2 of 13 from the field. Brian Brown against him at his career high, 25 points. See right with the foul, but uh, Izzo pronouncing his team the healthiest they've been all season. Hudson has missed time with pneumonia. Bell, a couple others with the flu, but pretty much everybody close to 100% today. Not there on that three. Bell's rebound taken by Hudson, rejected, right back up, missed again. They stay after it. That's how Michigan State puts up year in year out the best offensive rebounding numbers in the country they are the best rebounding team in the big 10. how about a differential between 42 and 26 16.7 rebounds they led the nation last year in rebound Michigan margin at 11 and they're at 16.7 right now take a look at those rebound numbers right there michigan state has 290 offensive rebounds and their opponents 311 defenses which is where you get most of your rebounds They've won the boards in every game by at least three. Inbounds to Chappelle. Mike Chappelle wasting no time right up with a three-pointer. Well, Michigan State doing nothing wrong to this point. They're having a terrific game. Nine out of 13, three of five threes, 69%. Michigan, three of nine, 33%. This is a 7-2 Spartan run. It's Josh Moore, 7'2", 300-pound freshman. Up with a miss, stolen by Blanchard, and he draws the foul. There are five green jerseys in the backcourt, and only Blanchard was there, causing havoc for Michigan State. Well, Blanchard lingered a little bit underneath the basket, and kind of surprised, I think, the Michigan State players underneath. You see the foul committed down there. Pretty good move, Blanchard getting inside and being able to get that one back. Was that Chappelle that got him? Mike Chappelle's first. 
Michigan is as close as they are is their ability to get to the line and they are six of seven Michigan a pretty good free throw shooting team at 70 percent Michigan State's even better 72 percent second best in the league for the Spartans Blanchard now five out of six Adam Ballinger six nine sophomore Michigan State, recently got some starting time with uh, Hudson nursing pneumonia Michigan in a 2-3 zone. Here's one of those looks that Brian Ellery said he was going to show Michigan State tonight. Chappelle already with one three. Not this time. Bernard Robinson Jr. clears it. Blanchard consistently long with that shot tonight from the left wing. David, he's not really set on his shot. I mean, I, I think right now Michigan State is rushing him on all of his jump shots. Z right able to strip Bell. Taking it right back is in a gun yet. What a great effort does not pay off for the freshman Maurice Seawright. Arguably the best athlete in the state of Michigan last year. A wide receiver on an undefeated state championship football team and a guard on a state championship undefeated basketball team. St. Mary's High School. Another three, Chappelle's second tonight. And the lead is 10. Largest margin right here, 24-14. You're right, a look low for Aslan, but he's fronted by Ballinger. Tom O'Neill with the whistle. And uh, Chappelle with his second personal to go with his two to three pointers off the bench. And it extends the Michigan State lead to 10. You know, oftentimes we talk about screening against man-to-man -man defense. Just look what Michigan State does against the zone defense. Ballinger on the left and Agagne on the right. Watch Charlie Bell take the ball to the right. They're screening against the top. They scream the other way, and Mike Chappelle is wide open for a three-point shot. What's he do? He drains it. Great screening on the outside against that zone defense by Michigan State. And Mike Chappelle instantly coming in to hit two threes off the bench they were three of 17 all night saturday tonight they've already nailed four and Chappelle has half of those the guy who fought himself all last year at a real dip in his confidence did have an impact in the championship run though he had a key first of five points by himself in the championship game when Cleves was out helped him knock off florida and uh, Writing that experience into his senior year began at Duke, the Blue Devil, for his first two years. Michigan State's got back to his own a matchup. See Taylor out front. He's got C right. Clock now under 20. Not much happening yet for Michigan. More calls for it. Instead, it's Aslan up high. And finally, screening for Blanchard with a whistle blown by Ted Valentine underneath. Adam Ballinger called for the contact his first. You gotta realize he's got a load down there. I mean, Josh Moore is 7 2 3 0 5. I think you and I would have a hard time guarding together. Hard to avoid. Josh Moore. And he's had a hard time with fouls himself. Would like to get nice him. call, partner. <laughs> Ellerby normally would like to get Josh Moore on the floor enough to have an impact, but not get first half foul trouble. And so often he looks up at the half, he's already got two or three. He picked up three fouls in 36 seconds the other day in the Iowa game. Josh Moore's first tonight. Richardson back in, dumps down low, and Chappelle, eight quick ones off the bench. He got Blanchard a little too deep on that post down there, and it was an easy layup for him. You get that deep, that quick, to the basket, nobody's going to stop you. Chappelle averaging 5.6 per game. Great trap down underneath. Moore gets it back out to Queen, who is returned to C right at the point. 
Well, Dave, Michigan's trying to make this a slow game. I think we may have a double foul here. I'm looking at Jim Burr, and he indicated he was going to call a double foul underneath. And Josh Moore's got one of them. That's his second. Fourth against the team. Ballinger also his second. And the seventh against the team. So both guys pick up a foul, and what do the coaches do? They take them both out. Rod Robinson Jr. An early three-quarter, and that's been it from him. Top scoring freshman of the Big Ten all year. Shot clock down to two. Queen connects. Well, it's tough for Avery Queen to get a shot off like that, particularly when there are big guys in that paint area trying to slap it back in his face. You feel he's good enough getting his own shot and an accurate enough shooter that size not really as much as an issue as you might think for a 5'7", 150-pounder. This one will go on Josh Aslan. He's first. Another guy that battles foul trouble more often than not in Michigan. Charlie Bell back in, replacing Chappelle, who has been as big a factor as anybody at this point with his eight points off the bench for State. They quickly work it to Bell off the inbounds, rebounded by Blanchard. Given a little room by Andre Hudson. Look at Charlie Bell. Turn around, put back this. Young one more, stripped and fouled by Hudson. Offensive rebounding is going to be there for Michigan State. So, Larry, it had better be there for the Wolverines. Well, Chris Young, uh, ever present there, being, being able to drag this one in. You see the miss right there, an easy one by Blanchard. Young got it back, and uh, he'll go to the line again. Young's having an awfully good game, I think, underneath the basket. Awfully good year. He has just about doubled most of his career numbers coming into this year. You know, he may be the most improved player, I think, on this Michigan squad. He's developed a lot more confidence. The articles I was reading about him, he kind of patterns his play a lot like Brian Cardinal, the old Purdue uh, player who loved to get on the floor. I'm not sure Young at 6 and 9 wants to get down the floor very much, as much as Cardinal did. He's got eight points. And they work hard to get fouled and get free throws, and within seconds, Marcus Taylor has answered. Around the middle, wide open, and much to his liking, 28-18. It would be a lot worse for Michigan if they weren't hitting the boards as well as they are. They are out-rebounding, the best rebounding team, 10-7 right now. Aslan from up high. Only Zach Randolph was there for that board. Zach, MVP of the McDonald's All-America game in Boston last spring, and for Zach Randolph, eight points here in the first half. Today, this game is reminiscent of a game maybe on the asphalt of Detroit. I mean, the way these guys are going up and down the floor. Michigan State pace right now. Robinson short. Blanchard out fought by Randolph. He's got Lebeau Blanchard by, oh, about 65 pounds. Aslan comes down and hammers David Thomas for his second. Six against the team. Go back and look at the freshman, Zach Randolph, again, getting wide open. And once he gets the ball about eight feet from the basket, he's awfully good at getting the ball up and in. David Thomas shooting two. So here's David Thomas, fifth-year senior out of Brampton, Ontario, and the best free-throw shooter on the Spartan roster, 92% for the year. You sort of get the feeling that these two clubs are really beginning to go after each other, particularly underneath the basket down there. I don't think it's a place uh, where you get a seminar on flyer arrangements by Martha Stewart right now. <laughs> Thomas, as usual, is a vote. And goes out for Jason Richardson. Tom is always able to keep fresh talent on the floor. Already gone uh, nine deep in this first half. Avery Queen. Robinson battled hard for it, could not come up with it. It's out of bounds. You know, Dave, you make a good point. And I think the one thing that makes Tom is uh, one of the better coaches in this league, if not the country, he knows when to insert those guys. He looks at them, he knows when they're getting a little gas and has a chance to reach down on that bench and have the luxury of having quality people to put out there to replace the guys on the floor. 
He has that in common with uh, Mike Montgomery, uh, Coach K. Great feed down to the low block from up high. Randolph on the back door finding Andre Hudson. How about that bad pass from the freshman? 8-0 run in progress. Biggest lead of the game is now up to 16. Another unforced error by Michigan. Timeout, the second call by Ellerby. Michigan State treating this place like it's the Brinsman Center, where they've won 40 in a row. Let's go back and take a look at the play of Zach Randolph. High post, low post action. He gets it right at the free throw line, drops it down inside for an easy one for Andre Hudson. Tell you what, not only could he shoot the basketball from that area, but he's a terrific passer. Nice look inside. Still 8 9 to go in the first half. But it's slipping away right now. He's got to get a run to answer this 8-0 run right now. And it seems to be a real challenge for him to get his team to remember the pace they want to play. They're, they're all too willing to get into the up-and-down pace that Michigan State plays. Well, Dave, you know, you lose focus. I mean, once you start the game and you play the first two or three minutes and you're going to break next speed up and down the floor, you're not going to compete with Michigan State. They've got better, quicker people up and down the floor. Brian Ellerby is doing everything to put the bit in that mouth and pull these guys back, but they just aren't taking it. This is just about a perfect half of basketball. We're seeing Michigan State hitting 70% of their shots. They have turned it over once. They built a 16-point lead on the road. Bell, the target of the alley-oop, and he goes up in traffic and is fouled. They'll throw it to anybody, even 6'3 guard Charlie Bell. Nice pass by Taylor. I think he was expecting Bell to go up and dunk the ball, but Bell kind of slipped a little bit coming around the corner. Still is able to make the catch and draw the foul. John Robinson second. Charlie Bell is fifth in the Big Ten, 83% from the line. And the Flintstones, who uh, produced so many memorable moments in East Lansing the last several years, and this is the last remaining Flintstone. A 10-0 run now, and an 18-point lead. The Spartans have doubled up Michigan. names in Big Ten basketball who have taken part in this series. Kazi Russell certainly among them. He wouldn't be real happy with this summary right now. His team being outshot 70% to 24%. And they've only forced one Michigan State turnover. Michigan State has three different players with eight points apiece. They're getting their usual balance and they are dominating this game right now every way it can be dominated. Dave, I had a chance to play against Cassie Russell back in 1966 in the NCAA tournament. He was a terrific player. And they're still in basketball. Coaching in your neck of the woods, Georgia. Blanchard, a three-pointer. Can't get it. Foul after the unsuccessful tip. Young and Aslan working hard on the offensive glass. This will be three on Josh Aslan. Foul trouble again. Is 25 minutes per game. Plus, Lavelle Blanchard coming around the screen right there. You can see the trip. Richardson went down. Blanchard he looks up, gets the front of the rim, and you'll see the foul committed on the missed tip right there by Owens and Aslan over the back. Andre Hudson at the line, shooting one and one. So he sits with seven and a half minutes still to go in this first half. Hudson, good on the front end, 69%. Sat out with pneumonia. He didn't play the first Ohio State game, which they won in his absence by 15. He came back Saturday and uh, was easily the brightest spot for the Spartans. Seven of ten he hit for a team leading 17 points. It wasn't enough for the nine-point loss. So now a 20-point Michigan State lead. They won the two games with Michigan last year by a total of 71 points. Michigan State continues to switch defenses. They're in a straight man-to-man -man again. Tom Izzo experimented with a little zone, a matchup. Did pretty well with it. Shot clock at seven. Queen. Trap. Hit 
gets it off to Young, who barely beats the shot clock and barely draws iron. So another empty possession by the Wolverines. Randolph, high low feed, cuts and foul by Chris Young. His first. Second time now that Randolph has got that ball in the high post and dropped it down inside. That time his target was Andre Hudson. Jay Randolph does a nice job of handling the basketball right in the middle. Look at this pass. Away from the defender. No chance for Chris Young to get over there and get it, and it helps Hudson go to the line. It's quite a senior class, Andre Hudson's part of with Charlie Bell. David Thomas, 50 year senior. Chappelle, a senior who transferred to the program. Here comes Thomas for David Thomas. Right now, the Hudson Bell class, 103 and 22. Now, the all time record for a Big Ten senior class is 108 wins, and Indiana's had two different classes do it. Class of 76. Class of 94, if Michigan State wins tonight, they equal last year's senior class at 104. Then can set their sights on uh, becoming the most successful senior class, at least in terms of total victories ever to play in this conference. If they repeat the national championship, they're right there any way you divide it up as the most successful senior class. Right there with the Ohio State, at the early 60s. Well, they were terrific. I saw that play. All, all three of their clubs. Reese right for Queen. Well, they've got the first part of the equation down, slowing the pace. Now the problem becomes, are they getting any shot at the end of the shot clock? Robinson steps on the end line. How good defensively is Michigan State? I mean, Michigan wants to slow it down. They want to find the shot. And the Spartans just won't let them. Plays so well on both ends of the court. Not only is their offense in high gear, but their defense is stifling. Not that many turnovers by Michigan, but only two. Ridiculously low number right now for State. And a Ted Valentine call from underneath. Think, you know how hard it is to go at the pace that Michigan State goes and only turn the ball over a couple of times? I mean, that is so tough to do. Tells you how disciplined this club is and how well conditioned they are. They are great at getting the ball to the open man. Just terrific. Last foul, Chris Young, second. Well, in Tom Nizzo's sixth year, he said, uh, what happens this year, maybe next year, will determine really how this entire era is looked at for Michigan State. Will we be just a team that had a nice year, or will we establish something for years to come the way Carolina, Duke, Kansas, the, the dynasties have done? Well, you know, having looked back on what they've been able to accomplish over the last three years of the Big Ten, the fact that they went to the Final Four the year before they won the national championship last year, I think a lot of people can look at this program and say this is one of the elite members of college basketball's fraternity right now. I mean, this Michigan State club is solid this year. They're going to be right back to the pick up it again, I think, in late March. He was uh, halfway kidding, lamenting the fact that they are such a target this year. This by Robinson. That's rebound and save by Hudson. And they kick it into running gear again. It's Bell all the way with a scoop. The defense dropped off, covered the guys on the wings. All he did was just go down and lay a little scoop shot up. Lizzo said he talked to coaches who have won national championships. They all told him, get ready to be everybody's biggest game. And he said, sure enough, this is the fourth game this year where they've come into a town and been the first sellout game for that school. And that has taken some getting used to. So, you know, we're Michigan State. We're not UCLA of the 60s. Well, you know, maybe they're not, but in the modern picture of college basketball, they're as close as you can get. Chipper having a conversation. He had one with Tom Izzo. Then he went down to, down to talk to Brian Ellerby. I'm not sure what this conversation's about. I think maybe he's asking both coaches to tone it down a little bit. Tom, give me the ball. Jim doesn't have rabbit ears. Oh, no. Blanchard over for uh, quick attention. He may have uh, a cut that's bleeding, and so Steve Tricker, the Michigan trainer, has got to patch him up a bit. Watch Bell. See, now look at the wings right there. They drop off to cover the guys on the wings, and Bell just takes it all the way for an easy layup. Charlie Bell says, I'll do that anytime you want to let me come down the lane. 515 to go. 
Michigan State back into that matchup zone defense again. This is a 17-0 Spartan run. And again, they're having trouble getting a shot. Down to two, down to one. Robinson got it off in time, can't get it in. And another chance to run for the Spartans. Here they go. Look at the ball movement ending up in a Richardson slam dunk. Can you play any better than Michigan State is playing right now? A 19-0 run and the third timeout of the first half call by Michigan. There's the one thing you've got to be impressed with, not only the fact that they're scoring all these points in the paint, but when they get the rebound, how quickly they get down the floor. Look at this pass forward. Charlie Bell gets it up there. Nice drop-off pass down inside to Jason Richardson and an easy layup. Dave Thomas with a good look inside. They are just blinding coming down that, that floor with the basketball very quick off the break. This is about as good as it gets. Ten minutes and 21 seconds were on the clock the last time Michigan scored. It was 26 to 18 at that point. Marcel Blanchard you. still without a field goal there. Yeah, watch Lavelle Blanchard right here in the corner trying to get open. Trying to get the ball to somebody who's open. He just stays out on the outside. Wants the ball back. Can't get it. Michigan State doing a terrific job on defense. If Blanchard finally wants to go to the inside, and Thomas won't let him in there. Blanchard is 0 for 6, 0 for 3 on three-pointers. He has five points on six free-throw attempts and three rebounds. This is a guy who, in the last three games, is averaging nearly 26 points on 59% field goal shooting. Yeah, but I don't think he's run into a defense like he is facing here tonight. I don't think I've seen a game all year, and I've done a number so far, and I know you have too, where I've seen a team absolutely dominate both ends of the floor. Well, most of them have involved Duke one way or another. Duke first half against Virginia, where they got up by as many as 30, comes to mind. Robinson continues his poor shooting. He's one out of five, one out of six now make it. And a whistle for that shot by Jason Richardson. Josh Moore has three. He has not played much more than about three minutes. Holder says whatever movement he makes, he's just so big, he's such a, a hard guy to hide out there that any contact, he tends to draw attention to himself, makes it an easy call for the decision. Patagonia at the line, as Chappelle places Richardson. I was looking at Anagonye's statistics before the game. He actually has more offensive rebounds than he does defensive rebounds. That's how strong a board guy he is. And these Michigan State guys really attack that offensive glass, as we pointed out earlier in that graphic that we showed you. 21 unanswered Michigan State points. Wolverine sticking to this part of the plan, working the shot clock. There's just not any kind of a good shot waiting for him at the end of the 35 seconds. Well, they look up and they all, they've always got a green jersey right in their face. This is an outstanding defense. David Thomas gets the strip. Bill almost run over by his own man, Anagonye. So the Spartans will reset. Having held Michigan scoreless now almost seven minutes. They patiently work their perimeter until they get a three-pointer by Thomas. Mercy. 50. 18. I'm going to tell you what, if this is a three-act play, everybody's in the act right now. They don't have to go to the second and third act. 24 nothing. It's there it the is. Run and it finally ends as Blanchard finally hits. A little mock applause from the Michigan crowd. Hudson, right back, probably to another Michigan State run. He has 11. That is as well as you're going to see a college team play for that extended time against the rival on the rival's home floor. 24 unanswered points. Now Blanchard. 
Make up for lost time. 52-23. And it'll be traveling on Mike Chappelle. With a timeout with 2.36 remaining. All Spartans in Ann Arbor tonight. Well, Michigan State has history in their sights. Going for a four-peat, there have only been three in Big Ten history. Yeah, University of Chicago used to be a Big Ten team back in the aughts, 07 to 10. Ohio State, the uh, great Havlicek, Lucas Years, Indiana, the May Buckner, 73 to 76 class, and now Michigan State trailing Illinois by one game in the standings coming in, but this is always the tournament. And they go for four in a row. They keep shooting 75% every game. I predict they're going to get it. You know what? The one club, as I was looking at that group going down through there, that a lot of people probably would not have been that was Purdue. You know, they won those three Big Ten titles in 94, 95, and 96. Sometimes think uh, we don't give Purdue enough credit. Uh, this, these clubs are very, very good. Blanchard. Ten points. Now eleven. He sense his frustration during that 24-point run by Michigan State. Moving without the ball, trying to get open. Nothing was working. More often than not, he wasn't getting the shot. And he had to get some attention from uh, from the trainer and may have to get some more because that cut appears to still be bleeding on the side of his face. Now, Dave, there's one, only one other run that happened to this Michigan club this year that was maybe as bad, and that was the one down at Cameron Indoor when Duke jumped on them 34-2. to Duke will do that to you. That's just the fourth turnover by the Spartans. Coming up at halftime, the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Sports Center in-game with news about Rick Pitino again. And UConn St. John's highlights. Chris Fowler bringing everybody up to date on everything in two minutes. Blanchard intended for Young down low, and he gets bumped by Jason Andreas, who has uh, gotten an unusual first half ball off the bench. 6'10", redshirt freshman out of Sugar Creek, Ohio, commits the foul. Chris Young at the line. I'll tell you one thing, he got his money's worth. <laughs> he came across there and pounded him pretty good. Chris Young said he could not sleep Sunday night. So jacked up for this opportunity. That revenge for that 51-point wipeout and uh, the revenge a long way off at this point. Right now, the last two and a half games between these two. As of right now, the margin is 96 points for Michigan State over Michigan over the last two and a half meetings. You did all that in your head. Ouch. Going for the sixth straight win in this series. This will be on Michigan. Michigan Bernard Robinson Jr.'s third. Robinson so Aslan with three, Robinson three, Josh Moore with three. Among all their other troubles, they've got three of their top players in foul trouble, and Gavin Groninger will come on for Robinson. Robinson now resorting to grabbing Richardson's jersey as he goes by. At the line, number 23, Jason Richardson shooting two. Jason Richardson says he was literally two hours away from signing with Brian Ellerby. Last minute change of mind. So he got such a good feeling being around the Michigan State players. Their sense of family is what changed his mind and drew him up to East Lansing. He, he was almost a teammate of Lavelle Blanchard. How tough would those two be? Oh, they've been really good. It was interesting in reading the article about that. He said when he went to bed that night, he made up his mind the next morning he was going to go to Michigan. He woke up the next morning, decided it was Michigan State. Something happened in his sleep. Nobody says he was sweating out a lot of recruits, including Blanchard in that class, but he wasn't sweating Richardson. He was sure Jason was heading to Ann Arbor. Josh Moore has some skills at 7'2", 300. That one won't go. State has led by as many as 32 points. 27 at the moment. Josh Moore again. That will be his fourth. We still have a minute 15 in the first half. 
Rivalry week tomorrow takes us to the ACC for doubleheader action. NC State at number 12, Wake Forest at 7, and then number 10, Maryland at 11th rank, Virginia. Both of those will be worth your while. Wake and Maryland ACC. coming off some uh, pretty disappointing losses over the weekend. Wake Forest going down to a Cincinnati club that surprised them a little bit. In fact, I heard that uh, Bob Huggins in his loss to Louisville at Cincinnati locked his players out of the locker room. Wouldn't let them in. I guess it worked. They came back to beat Wake Forest. You've had enough of them for one day. <laughs> he actually had a shirts versus skins practice. He wouldn't give him access to the practice. Yeah, gear. he says you don't you don't deserve to wear Cincinnati uniforms or practice gear. Anagonier 4-4. Four four. Lead back to 29. We head to the final minute of the first half. Double team. This is Leon Jones, 6'5 junior, Battle Creek, Michigan. Down to 10 on the shot clock for Sierra. And again, they're going to have to hurry. Blanchard from the head of the key, wide left, 41 seconds. There's too many possessions like that one for the Wolverines. You go 30 seconds and put up a shot like that, you're doing nothing but helping the opposing team. About six seconds difference, 18 on the shot clock. is going to sit back in that zone defense. They'll get a chance to get the ball back. If, in fact, they rebound a missed shot. That's in five seconds. It's a three-pointer for Bell. Bell gets his rebound. Back up strong. Thought he was fouled. No call. No tip in either. And Michigan State comes up empty. At the end of the first half, one of the few things they didn't do to perfection. Andre Hudson providing 11 points. And what a show that first 20 minutes put on by the Michigan State Spartans. They led by as many as 32. It's 56-27 at the half. We send it to the studio and Chris Bell. are the Spartans red hot, but that halftime participant made five shots in 30 seconds. He's hot enough to win $10,000. Michigan State has its season high 56 points in the first half. They also had 56 December 9th against Loyola. 56 to 27. Hard Larry to find anything they didn't do just about perfectly. Let's go back and take a look at some of the highlights in the first half, and there were a lot of them. Charlie Bell had an outstanding first half coming off of a double screen, nailing the three, and that kind of got it started for the Spartans. Andre Hudson, he gets it down underneath on a nice pass from Zach Randolph. Good high post, low post passing. Watch the turn right here. Richardson gets it to Randolph inside for an easy one. And of course the break. They ran it to perfection. Nice pass by Thomas to Richardson. In the first half, they had 18 field goals. And of those 18 field goals, they had 11 assists to go with those 18 field goals. They moved the ball well. They made most of their shots, 67% in fact, from the field. And they made all their free throws. They were 15 to 15 from the line. So, uh, I mean, you're really almost looking at perfection on that left side uh, of the tote board. Michigan counters with only 6 of 28, 21%. Uh, they only missed one free throw. But outscored 18-4 in the paint. 17-0 off the bench. Anything Tom Izzo did turn to gold in the first half. And their last two halves of action against Michigan, they had 63 in the second half of that 114-63 win back in March. And now 56 in this first half. And that'll be a held ball, and the possession arrow will uh, give it to Michigan State. I'll tell you what, how bad is it right now for Michigan? Josh Aslan has a nice turnaround shot, and he sticks it between the backboard and the rim, and it wedges itself in there. Jump ball situation, alternate possession, gives the ball to Michigan State. Josh still scoreless. Ellerby calls him the pulse of the team. Scoreless, only one rebound for Aslan. That pass stolen by Young. Avery Queen had two first half points. They throw it right back. Look out. Here comes Richardson. Ouch. Oh, he missed two of them. They're a part of the charm, baby. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I mean, I was.
was all ready for that rim to come tumbling down. Both coaches are mad. Izzo is really upset with Richardson. Ryan Ellerby is mad at his club for not getting back on defense. Nobody rushing down there to challenge Richardson. These are huddle happy right now. Did, Did he just move? take off too far away from the hoop? Yeah, he was a little too early. And once he got inside, at least one guy got down there. Aslan was the only guy there. Then a jump shows up. Finally, he gets it after the third and ten. Boy, his zone is really hot. Jason Richardson is a guy who can uh, turn just about any play into showtime, and he's not playing for a showtime coach. No. Just the opposite. I'll tell you what, as bad as Tom Izzo was, Brian Ellerby was equally as bad at his huddle. So forget the highlight plays. 58-27, though, as Richardson does get his uh, 11 point now. Bernard Robinson Jr., who had an early three-pointer, and that was it. He's averaging about 5.6. Jim Burr just gave Brian Ellerby a technical. He wanted an offensive foul call. And from clear across the floor, Jim Burr, reading his lips, apparently, tees up Brian Ellerby. Michigan State's perfection at the line. 16 of 60. He's three for three. Ten points now, 11 for Charlie Bell. Of course, the new rule in college basketball now is that you simply shoot the technicals and give the ball back to the team that had possession, and Michigan was the club that had possession. Now the margin, biggest jet for the Spartans. Robinson to Young, and he's fouled, unable to finish and go for a three-point play, though. Chris Young and uh, Blanchard together, 22 of the 29 Michigan points. Bernard Robinson with a nice move on the baseline right here. Knifed his way through two Michigan State defenders, and fortunate to find Chris Young in the paint area to drop it off to. Young now 11. Those two at or about where they normally are, but nobody else having any kind of a performance to back up Blanchard and Young. Aslan scoreless. Nobody off the bench has scored for the Wolverines. Nice rebound pulled there by Lavelle Blanchard. And just about anybody that Izzo has gone to has contributed. Points. Defense, rebounding, anything you want. Lob intended for Aslan. And he crashes over a photographer's seat as he tries to uh, save it. Hopefully he's going to be okay, and apparently he will be. Queen tried to lob down inside. He was throwing it over with Zach Randolph, and Aslan just could not reach out and pull it back in. I'll tell you what, they're making it so difficult on everything they do. Michigan can't get a good shot. They're having difficulty making their passes. So just about everything they want to do on defense. Zach Randolph. But this part of the game is not suffering much either. He is still perfect. Five of five from the field. Ten points, three rebounds for the freshman. Maybe I'm not going into the season that Zach Randolph might be freshman of the year in the nation. I'll tell you what, he has gotten better as the year has gone along. Averaging 11 points and seven rebounds for his Michigan State club. He's played very well for the Spartans. I continue to be amazed by the free throw shooting. You, you won't see for one or two NBA teams make 18 straight free throws, much less the first 18 they've shot. And Michigan State has still not missed their 64% from the field. Just an incredible display. Defense as well. Hudson with that steal, and they turn it over. That's just their sixth turnover. Robinson, part of the freshman class in the Big Ten. He is all season long been the top scorer, followed by Jared Jeffries. Minnesota will miss uh, Mike Bauer the rest of the year. 
broken forearm. And then Zach Randolph, who's just recently been elevated into the starting lineup. And he's right at 11 points and about seven rebounds per game. It's four pretty good freshman right there. Minnesota club is doing it with mirrors up there, aren't they? I know they're under 500 in the Big Ten schedule, but uh, that's a pretty good year. They're recently perfect at home. They won 15 of their first 18. And you're right. Very few people around college basketball have been taking a full measure of how good they are this year. Long rebound by Queen off the miss by Blanchard. Robinson right up with a three. And Michigan still down at 22% from the field. Why not pull up and try a three? Jason Richardson second. I think anything but a 360 dunk. We'll see from Jason the rest of the night. I'm not sure that, that will even get him out of the doghouse. <laughs> Tom Izzo still upset about that turnaround miss. Groniger gets a wide open look and he can't get the three. And that's trouble when Gavin Groniger, who's in there pretty much to do nothing but shoot threes, can't hit that open. Andre Hudson in and out. Randolph steals the board. Well, coaches, I guess, always want to find one thing to focus on even at a near perfect performance. So Izzo now has that one thing to focus on, I guess. The ill-fated breakaway a moment ago. Randolph, six out of six. Six out of seven, maybe. 13.6 boards. I just watched Randolph do two great things underneath that basket. He came up with two loose balls, ended up with a basket for himself. Terrific hustle by the freshman. Queen draws a reach, 70 to 30. Last meeting was the worst loss in Michigan history by 51. You may see that fall by the wayside tonight. Well, the picture atop the Big Ten, Illinois by a game over Michigan State and Iowa. Michigan State with this win will improve to 62 and trail by just a half game. Their next game will be at home against Purdue on uh, February 4th. And Purdue, as always, right there, 5-3. and three. No matter who Gene Cady loses, he always puts together a squad that's going to end up somewhere around 20-25 wins, somewhere in the NCAA tournament. From there, Illinois on the road. On the road at Minnesota, their final three home games are Iowa, Indiana, and Michigan. They still have to go to Wisconsin and to Penn State. And we've talked about how difficult it is tonight, notwithstanding, for a road team with the Big Ten this year. They've won only 10 of 40 games coming into this one. You know, Davis, you look at those standings in the Big Ten, uh, obviously there's a lot of jockeying going on at the top. I don't know how many teams the Big Ten's going to get into the NCAA tournament, but obviously uh, they can't take them all. There's got to be some clubs that are going to have to drop off. The question is, who's going to come on in this last month? Who's going to drop off? They've got several clubs. They've got about eight teams you can look at that I think are legitimate contenders to get in. Adam Wolf, redshirt freshman, gets his first basket. Well, looking to last year, a lot of people didn't think Wisconsin would make it in. Just barely a 500 team in the league. And proved to be a pretty good pick. Absolutely. Ended up in the final four. So you wonder if that may inform the selection process this year. There's a team that may be uh, not that impressive in some minds, but at least breaks even in, in the Big Ten portion of their schedule. There's precedent to indicate that that can be a team that goes a long way. This conference has always had uh, the ability to send really good teams to that NCAA tournament. I mean, even when you get down to that fifth, sixth, or seventh club out of this league, it's a pretty good team. Well, look at Andre Hudson still in there as if it's... 85-85, and not 85-49. Timeout called as Hudson dives and has just enough possession to get the timeout. Michigan State, a lot like Duke, Larry, in that it doesn't matter how talented they are, they all play as if they're walk-ons afraid of losing their scholarship. <laughs> How about that hustle right there? I mean, no reason you have to go on the floor, but that's the way that they've been playing. So again, home against Purdue, and the one that everybody has anticipated all year, and it is the only regular season meeting for uh, the Spartans and the Illini, and it kicks off Super Tuesday next week, 7 Eastern, here on ESPN. Michigan 
as number 16 Wisconsin before they go to Penn State and Indiana. Home for Iowa, Minnesota, Purdue, and Northwestern. And they close at East Lansing. Right now, the gap between these two programs uh, really in evidence. This will be the sixth straight win for the Spartans. And the third straight route. Two wins by a total of 71 points last year. Nice ball movement again by Michigan State. And a more crashing the offensive glass comes down out of bounds. The reason he came down out of bounds, he got a nice shove. Well, originally uh, from Westerville, Ohio, Kentucky thought they had him recruited at one point to replace Scott Padgett. He decided to come to Michigan State. He told the championship parade crowd after redshirting last year, you don't know me, but you will. That's confidence. Nice to hear that from a guy coming in his first year. Avery Queen, Bernard Robinson Jr., Blanchard, Aslan, four starters with Josh Moore on the floor right now for LRB, and the tip in goes for Blanchard. Really nice tip in. He was actually underneath the basket and had to reach around to tip it. That's been pretty for him, but he's got 18 points. Ballinger no good from three. Wolf saves it. Was it off Aslan? Did it stay on this end? They've spent a lot of time in the Big Ten in the last couple of years and also this season. I, I think this league may be as good as it was last year, considering the fact they had two teams in the Final Four last year. It really uh, did well, I think, in the tournament as an overall conference. Not sure if there's going to be a Wisconsin this year. A team that can come from the middle of the pack and surprise themselves and everybody else in the Final Four. At the top, uh, you may be right, because as much talent as Michigan State lost, Leaves and Peterson, they plug in... Taylor and Richardson, not that they are their equal yet, but they show signs of maybe getting there someday. And certainly Bill Self's club out in Champaign is excellent. Well, they're very talented. They lost very little off last year's team, and everybody they have on the roster this year is a returnee from last year. They maybe don't have the peak performances as impressive as this one by Michigan State. They just barely survived here 55-51 a few days ago. But they have enough talent up and down the roster that next Tuesday is really going to be fun to watch. Fourth foul on Chicago. Blanchard, uh, in the true manner of a scorer, not just a shooter, but a scorer, has had to get his 18 points the hard way. 10 of 11 from the foul line. And uh, the old friends and nemeses head to head. Pretty even. But that's not what they're going to be talking about when this is over. They're going to talk about what that final score was. And I think Richardson's going to be doing most of the talk. <laughs> Michigan ball out of bounds. Had a nice visit today with Lavelle Blanchard. I was asking him in all the years that these two guys have been playing against each other. I mean, from high school all the way through to this point in their career in the Big Ten. I said, do you guys ever have a chance to really sit down, get on the telephone, talk to each other? He said, no, not really. And I says, but when you were playing against each other, did either one of you do any trash talking? He says, no, not really. <laughs> not really in their personalities, especially Blanchard, very soft-spoken. Very soft-spoken. Well, 22 points. He has his fourth straight game of at least 20. Small consolation tonight. Chappelle. Well, he came in hot in the first half off the bench, and he has stayed hot. Five out of six, 12 points. Crowded underneath. Even Josh Moore turned away. Look, Andrews was the one that got it. Ballinger. Wolf had a bead on the long rebound. Wolf. He was actually over in front of the Michigan State bench and came over and got that one. So impressed with the way this Michigan State club continues to play. Look at them run their patterns. He just walked in. He didn't know the score. You think it's tied. 
terms of the, the total effort up and down both rosters. See right, the steal, then blocked by Ballinger. Blanchard still hustling. Lavelle has 24, seven boards. They were down 29 at the half. They have just managed to find him to a draw here in the second half. Once again, Michigan State's going to pull it out and run their offense. I don't think Tom Izzo isn't watching what's going on on that floor right now, too. Blanchard's spending a lot of time on that floor. Long pass, Aslan. Will not go scoreless. Pretty nice catch and basket there, too. Spartans' biggest lead of the night was 74-30 ahead of by as many as 44 points and run after run the most impressive was a 24 unanswered point run late in the first half which made it 50 to 18 it's been uh, misery ever since for mission with long proud histories together they have produced 30 all americas 13 big 10 championships and the last three in succession for michigan state 10 final fours three championships star stars tonight right there andre hudson our new york life player of the game 15 points 10 rebounds his 13th career double double they are 12 and one when andre hudson gets double figure points and rebounds Michigan State will move on and pick up their 17th win against two losses. More importantly, in the Big Ten, they'll move to 6-2. Let's keep pouring it on. Adam Wolf makes it 87-89 to 59 now. A 30-point lead. We head to the final minute, 23, and Blanchard getting his points. Better late than never. 27. Next high score, Young with 11, Robinson with 10. There's not enough help for the Bell Blanchard tonight. No. I'm not sure there's enough in this whole arena for it. Long two-pointer, Wolf. I'm going to tell you what, when a guy shoots 21% from three-point range begins to bury, but you know things are going right. Blanchard tried another three, a rebound foul. Coming up, just a matter of moments, we'll go to the SEC as rivalry week continues. Super Tuesday as Tennessee visiting Florida. Go down there and visit those rowdy reptiles. Herb Gibson, 6'5 junior out of Taylor, Michigan, on the line. Carolina Duke on ESPN2, the feature matchup of rivalry week Thursday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. They will come in fourth and second in the country, respectively. Best conference, I think, in the nation right now, the ACC, as evidenced by those two clubs right there at the top. We got several other good ones in there, too, though. Maryland with a disappointing loss to Duke, having, uh, I thought, socked them away with 54 seconds to go on Saturday night. How would I'm you not think they had him socked away? 10-point lead under a minute. Traveling. Traveling. On Wolf. End of the bench is in now. Matt Ishpia, walk-on sophomore, 5'10". Out of Bloomfield. Final 42 seconds. And we'll get this note in, too. If they don't shoot another free throw, Michigan State will tie its club record for best free throw shooting game. 18 of 18. Josh Moore, nine points all here in the second half. But the sixth straight meeting goes to the Spartans as their domination becomes even more impressive in this in-state rivalry. Anyway, I think the question has been answered whether Michigan State was going to have any after effects of that loss against Ohio State. Nope, they had none. Last three games between these two, Michigan State has won by a total margin of 98 points. They win this one 91 to 64. Our final 
Field from Ann Arbor, number five Michigan State rolls. Coming up next, rivalry week continues with Tennessee and Florida from Gainesville. For Larry Conley, Dave Barnett, so long from Chrysler Arena, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Right now, let's join Chris Fowler back in the studio. Dave, thank you. Next up on Super Tuesday, Brett Nelson and the Florida Gators play a host to Tennessee as rivalry week continues. Two great rivals in the SEC and make you very few guarantees in this world, but I guarantee game two will be more competitive than our first game tonight. Last year, both games between Florida and Tennessee went to overtime. They were decided by a total of five points. And the